Hiya fishy folks, welcome to disaster in the fish room. That's right, water all over the floor. If we go back behind the scenes, you can see water all over here. Uh, I'll show you what I found. So I found water on the floor this morning. I ran the, that's not good. I ran the um, auto water change system and for five minutes and I didn't see any leak and I thought that was weird. The system runs for about 10 minutes, uh, twice a day. So I ran it for 10 minutes and water started pouring out from my sump, which is over here. Just a quick overview of how the water, the drain system works. All the tanks uh, drain from this tube. There's a bulkhead on the back. Water goes in, overflows through the bulk, through the uh, standpipe, then down this hose into either this three inch drain pipe or that two inch drain pipe, sorry, four inch drain pipe and two inch drain pipe. And then into this 15 gallon sump. Then a sump pump pumps it into my slop sink pump which then pumps it into the uh, house's sewer system out into the street or out into the main drain, if you will. You can see that is over full and the pump normally is attached right here. So I've had this happen once before or maybe twice before where the, um, the float valve has stuck closed and so it didn't didn't actuate uh, on the sump pump there's a float valve if you're not familiar with a float valve is it's a valve actually i'll show it to you make it easy but i did take the pump out to find out what's what's the problem because the pump was working yeah this is a problem i'm gonna have to take care of this um insulation going back over here yeah there's a lot of stuff on the floor that wasn't on the floor before, but it's on the floor now because I was looking for this this leak this morning. All right, so let's look at the pump. So here's the float. This is how, it, oh, I unscrewed this. And I meant to show you what it looks like, but this sits in the water like this, and you can see there's the float right there. And what happens when the water comes up, that comes up like that and the pump turns on and then the pump turns off like that so here's the impeller for the pump and if you look in the front you can see it's all caked in there with uh with some java moss so i want to take this out and clean it properly i'm going to do that and i'll show you what i find stand by all right fishy folks i took the impeller out and you can see the intake is completely almost completely blocked with java moss and uh, that's probably from when I, I vacuum or I gravel vac tanks. I use a big hose and drain it into the drain. And the reason I use a big hose and drain it into the drain is uh, it's easier. And I use a big hose because if there's a snail or something, it doesn't, it's not going to get stuck and impede my progress. So that's kind of silly. Let me clean this up, put the system back together, show you what it looks like and see if it works. All right, fishy folks, back in the fish room. About 14 hours later, I just got home from work. Not really, I got home from work about an hour ago. Shoved some food in my mouth and came down to check, see if the watchdog, the basement watchdog do float controller worked after taking a bath, and it doesn't. It's stuck on, which I guess is better than stuck off, but we don't want it stuck on. Um, as you may or may not know, I'm leaving Today is actually Thursday. You'll probably watch this video on Sunday, but I'm leaving for Japan on Saturday, even though there's a typhoon and I probably should leave tomorrow, but I'm not ready to leave. Long story short, you'll see this someday. Anywho, while I'm gone, I don't want any problems. So I want to check the float and I want to explain to you how float switch works. Now this lamp is plugged into the float controller. So what's supposed to happen is, uh, there's a, I just took the cage off. This sits in a cage to help protect it from uh, debris getting stuck in there. What's supposed to happen though is, as this is in the water, 
this is off. When the water comes up like this, it closes the circuit and allows electricity to flow to the outlet. So the outlet now is on. It has a backup one in case one of these fail. That's why it's pretty good. But no matter what I do, the light doesn't go off. So I bought a new float. And let me show you how that works. So I, I couldn't find the same float. I wanted the same float. I may indeed buy another one of these floats. Uh, I've had this for as long as the fish room almost. Maybe as long as the fish room. I had this for about two years. Never a problem until I dropped it in the water. Just gonna move this out of the way. And this is just called a piggyback float switch. And the, one of the problems with this is it's easy to get tangled in debris. So I kind of got to be careful what I put in there. Now the way this works is there's a float in here. And so when it's sitting in the water like this, it's not on. As the water comes up, it floats like this. And when it goes like that, it turns the switch on and then comes like this and it turns the switch off. This is what I have in my sump pump in the floor. You may have it in your house if you have a French drain or a sump pump in the floor. You probably have something very similar. So we'll show you how this works. We're gonna plug it in and there's a piggyback plug. So you plug this in and then you plug whatever you want to power or not power into it. We'll plug it in. We'll find the plug for the light. So the switch is off. Now when I turn this upside down, the light should come on. Boom, the light comes on. So now it's floating because there's water in there and as the pump is pumping, it comes down and blink, light goes off. I don't know if you can see that. So let's turn it like that. Don't look directly at the light, kids. Put sunglasses on. So the water comes up, the float comes up. Bink, the light goes on. Now the pump comes on. Light goes off, pump goes off. Pretty simple, right kids? All right, I'm gonna mount this to my uh, standpipe, the pipe uh, on the pump, and uh, then we'll check and see if it works. All right, guys, so hang tight. Don't go anywhere. Stand by. All right, fishy folks. Just gonna move this way a little bit for you. I have my pump here, I have the filter part on there, the strainer, and uh, what you do with one of these is um, you have to sort of plan ahead because you don't want to drop it into the tank and then it not work. So it comes with this handy dandy wire tie. I have some more wire ties if I need it, um, if I need them. But I, I want this to kind of hang off the side. Not, not quite, you can't see that not quite against the bottom because then the pump's gonna suck air. Uh, so, just a little bit over there. there. Then as the water comes up, bink, pump comes on, water goes down, bink, pump goes off. So, we're gonna wire tie it there. And where you wire tie the wire is where the bend point is. So that's kinda gonna be the height. So, we're gonna use their wire tie because it must be special water resistant nylon, heavy duty wire tie. I love wire ties. And then I'm just gonna take the wire. This is the pump wire. I'm gonna take the wire and just secure it to my my pipe a little higher just to make it a little bit of a neater installation. I'm actually gonna put it all the way up top to make sure it's out of the way of everything. And then I may run the wire along the drain as well. So now just to make this a little neater, we're gonna reach over here for our scissors. And uh, snippity snippity. Snippity snippity. So here's what's gonna happen. Timer's gonna go on, all the water change system's gonna activate like the Wonder Twins. Boom, water going in the tanks. Overflowing, draining into the drain, filling up the sump. Bink, pump comes on. Bink, pump goes off. 
water cue string. Bing, pump comes on. You get the picture? Good, because I don't have any more sound effects. All right, let's, uh, let's put this in the sump and test the system out. All right? Get some popcorn, a cold beverage, um, sit tight, and let's do this. All right, fishy folks, we're back behind the works. And I don't know if you can see, but there is a float right there. Here's my wire running up, running along the pipe. I have a loop, a drip loop, and then uh, a menagerie of wires into another dangerous thing right here. Don't look at that, whatever. Now, back to over here. So, when water starts coming out as the tanks are filling, this float will lift up. Do, 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 do. Boom, pump comes on. Boom, pump goes off. The only thing I have to see, which I can adjust, is does the pump come on fast enough so it doesn't overflow? So that's what I'm gonna wait and check and see, guys. So, well, I don't know why it's going in and out of focus. I wonder if it's because it's picking up the waves of the water. Anyway, got some lava rock back here. Got some, uh, oh, a soccer toy. It's wet, that's probably pretty gross. And some, uh, what is that media called? What is that called? Uh, shoot, I can't remember. Moving bed, moving bed media? Anyway, I learned from the former king of DIY how to do that. But uh, he doesn't do DIY anymore, so we don't want to talk about that. We all know how I feel about him. Anyway, we're going to wait and see what happens, see if that uh, turns on and the, the float comes on in time. So I'll be back. Stand by. All right, fishing close, the pump just kicked on. A little higher than I like. I wanna see how it goes. And uh, I'm gonna call it a night here, folks. So uh, hope you learned how a float switch works and you know how my sump works. And I imagine this is how a lot of people's sump works. Um, sure that Rich from Rich and Fishers, if you remember him, made his own float switches for the tank he has in his office, but me, I just buy them. Alright guys, don't forget to check out michaelscription.com and I will see you in the next video. Good morning fishy folks, even though it's not morning, that's dumb.